Well, it's interesting. I've been around long enough to know that supposedly this issue was dealt with a number of years ago, and lo and behold, it wasn't. And I'm seeing some smiles in the back row from people who dealt with it at that time. Uh, it's a recent issue that's uh, reared its ugly head. And for those of you who don't know, a good example of a pipe stem is like if you've got a certain shaped lot, for example, and you basically you know, is, sell your backyard and a house goes in there. Okay? Uh, it doesn't look good, and there are protections in place to prevent it. But if you have a previously recorded lot, and the little things, and da-da-da-da-da, and, you know, and the moon is in the seventh house and whatever, guess what? You get to do it. Okay. Um, because ultimately the county says, oh, goodness, we can't you know, wash your hands or whatever. So as to what more we can do, uh, you know, I, I guess ultimately we've dealt with the issue. We just have to, infill is a separate point, but as far as pipe stem, um, you know, we have to cross our fingers that people don't come forward and try to develop their backyards or their lots in previously recorded situations. And in some cases, because we were talking about it, they ran out and they did it. Happen with lot coverage as well. So our land is valuable. It is true that within the last uh, 10 years, we've done a lot of work on single family home zoning, and that's really what we're talking about here. We've looked at height, um, we've looked at lot coverage, the amount of space that a house can take up on a lot, and also pipe stem, which uh, has been already described. What I believe fundamentally with any question regarding single family home development is that we know in Virginia that we have uh, strong par property rights but we also have the opportunity as a county to trigger coming in for public review if you want to do something on your lot. Nothing should take away the inherent right of someone to develop, but certainly adding another house on a pipe stem is a doubling of density, and that should be something that the government can regulate. We can look at what setbacks are, we can look at size for houses, and I think we should be able to talk directly with uh, the homeowner or the property owner to say, if there's something that you want to be able to do, will it fit? And, uh, and if so, then let's find a way to make it work. I think when it comes to pipe stem um, lots, obviously everyone has the right to property, but I think when it comes to the size of the home um, and maybe the shape, depending upon um, the way it's laid out on that property, the community should have some say um, as to the, at least to the, the dimensions of the design. This is, as a homeowner, also as a dear friend who is going through this process right now, I'm very sensitive to this. My friend who is having this process, the developer did go around the neighborhood and pretty much tell everyone that this was happening and they made them aware of the situation. But what did not happen is making them aware of when the various hearings were going to occur. This, this is very sensitive. As homeowners in Arlington County, we want our property value to, be, to stay high. And we also want to gain property value. But we also want to make sure that appropriate processes are in place so that anyone who is a homeowner or potentially buying a house knows that this is occurring. And as a county board member, I would make sure that we had additional requirements in place to just make sure developers have reached out to those in the surrounding area. That is. That is definitely a necessity. Well, I'll take a little different tact on the answer to this one. Um, I, I, I've heard about the, this issue of pipe stems, and I heard someone telling me, can you believe how long they talked about that? Um, it, you know, it gets a little bit to the work of what should be the work of the board, and I think we could be working a little more efficiently. The work of the board is to set standards and priorities and policies, and then hire staff to implement those. And then to make sure that we have monitoring procedures to make sure that the, mon the, the implementation is going as it should be. And then you get into sort of this culture of continuous improvement. And board members sh should be working on policies and procedures and monitoring to, to see that where we're headed is where we want to be headed and we reflect the values of the community. But the real details of, of pipe stems, sidewalk lengths, um, tables on sidewalk cafes, really ought to be much more at a staff level, and I really don't think the county board should be spending a whole lot of time talking about it. Um, and if it's not working right now, then we need to figure out what are the policies, the procedures that need to be fixed so that it does start working well. Is it staff that needs to be changed? I'm not sure. More resources? That's the way we need to be working. And I, and I think if, as we face really big challenges, we may need to make sure we're keeping our eye on the big challenges and not get too caught up in a lot of details, which is easy for board members to do. And I did just go over a little bit.